Welcome to A Level and AP Physics. In today's lesson, we will discuss a typical type of question on circular motion from October November 2021, Paper 4, Variant 2. In this question, we will discuss a lot of important concepts about circular motion. And those concepts are very important to understand circular motion in depth. So let's try to understand important concepts about circular motion. For part A, we need to state what is meant by centripetal acceleration. Centripetal acceleration acceleration simply means center seeking means the meaning of centripetal is center seeking in this case we are talking about centripetal acceleration so we can say centripetal acceleration is center seeking acceleration center seeking simply means that direction of centripetal acceleration is towards center of circle means direction is to the center of circle to the center of circle. This is first thing we need to understand about centripetal acceleration. Now let's try to understand this one with the motion of this car inside the circle. When the car is at this point, direction of acceleration has to be upward. So this is AC, means it is towards center of circle. And when the car is at this point, direction of acceleration again has to be to the center. And when the car is at the top, let's say at this point, direction of acceleration acceleration again has to be towards center of circle and when the car is at this point direction of acceleration also has to be to the center of circle and this is true for any point in the circle imagine that when the car is at this point so at this point at any point in the circle direction of acceleration has to be this way so again this is to the center of circle if this car is doing circular motion it always has to be to the center of circle. So this is what we call centripetal acceleration. Now we also need to understand what is the relationship between velocity and centripetal acceleration. If you look at this point, direction of velocity of this car is upward. I mean this is direction of tangential velocity. And direction of acceleration is to the center of circle. And the angle between these two, angle is 90 degrees. Direction of acceleration is always perpendicular to direction of velocity. So we can also write down this point here we can write down ac is perpendicular to velocity perpendicular to v in order to answer this question we just need to write one point because this question has only one mark so if you simply write down centripetal acceleration is perpendicular to velocity you will get this one mark now let me show you how you can write down the answer so simply for this question you can say acceleration is perpendicular to velocity and direction of acceleration is towards center of circle and is directed towards center of circle directed we can say towards center of circle so if you write on this one you will get one mark actually we have written more than required so you will get two marks if this question has two marks but this question has only one mark if you have written acceleration is perpendicular to velocity you will get b mark. For part b it is given to us an unpowered toy car moves freely along a smooth track that is initially horizontal as you can see between point x and this point the track is horizontal it is also given to us the track contains a vertical circular loop vertical very important so this track is vertical it's not horizontal it can be horizontal circular loop but this one is vertical so very important one we can mark this one vertical circular loop mass of the car is given that is 230 grams and diameter of the loop is given that is equal to 6 62 centimeters. In this case, it is also given to us resistive forces are negligible, so we can ignore them. For part one, we need to show what happens to the magnitude of the centripetal acceleration of the car as it moves around the loop from x to y. Means when the car moves from x to y, what is happening to centripetal acceleration of this car especially to magnitude of centripetal acceleration now we need to understand when the car is moving up in moving from x to y in this part of the circle so between x and y and when the car is moving between x and y car is gaining height so simply we can say in this case kinetic energy will change into gpe so when kinetic energy will change into gpe kinetic energy will go down because this is 
unpowered per car so there is no energy supply to the car so car has only kinetic energy at this point that will be converted into gpe so when kinetic energy decrease gpe increase it means speed of the car this will decrease because height of the car is increasing now if we understand this point speed of the car is decreasing so then simply we can answer this question now one thing also you can understand in a little bit different way for example when this car is moving up let's say at this point gravity is acting down mg is acting down so this is kind of resistive force because the car is moving against this force so speed of the car will decrease so that's the reason kinetic energy is decreasing and height is increasing we can understand this one based on forces we can also understand this one based on energy conservation as speed is decreasing we can write down centripetal acceleration this is equal to v square divided by r so if v go down it simply means acceleration will go down so simply we need to write down acceleration will decrease or simply we can say acceleration decreases in this case and this question has only one mark if you write down acceleration will decrease between x and y you will get one mark only state what happens you no need to explain for the second part we need to explain if the car remains in contact with the track why the centripetal acceleration of the car at point y must be greater than 9.8 meters per second per second in order to answer this question we need to understand forces acting on the car at point y if you look at point y there are two forces acting on this car one is the weight of the car that is acting down this is force of gravity and the second is the normal reaction force from the track so these two forces are acting and these two forces are responsible for centripetal force so we can simply say in this case centripetal force is provided by centripetal force is provided by normal reaction force and gravity we can discuss the critical point when car is just touching the track car is just touching the track we can say when car is just touching and there is no normal reaction force just touching means that the car is not pushing against the track and track is not pushing on the car so in that case we can say fc is provided by weight on it and fc is equal to m times ec and weight is equal to mg so mass is common we can cancel so ac is equal to G. this is critical value of acceleration we need for this car to complete circle so we can write down here this one if centripetal acceleration is greater than or equal to g car will not fall down we will say not fall down one we can say not fall down second case if centripetal acceleration is less than g car will fall down so this is the second one car will fall down now let's try to understand this one in terms of forces as we have written here ac has to be greater than g it simply means that the centripetal force it has to be greater than the weight of the car it simply means that centripetal force has to be equal to weight plus normal reaction force there must be normal reaction force for the contact with the track if no contact with the track it means car will simply fall down so fc has to be greater than weight of the car because we need contact with the track for this car to complete the cycle in this case if fc is less than weight car will fall down now let's try to write down our answer if you have understanding of this concept very important point often very confusing for many students I hope it is clear to you. Now let me explain to you how you can write down the answer. In our answer, we can mention these two points. First, centripetal force must be greater than weight of the car as we have written here. So this lower point one. Then the second, centripetal force has to be greater than weight because we need normal reaction force for contact with the track. If no contact with the track, it means car has left the track and car will fall down. For part C, initial speed of the car is given and the value of initial speed is 3.8 meters per second and we need to find out is it possible for this car to complete this 
cycle and the critical point is point y if the car is in contact at point y it means car can complete the cycle if the car lose contact with the track at point y it means car cannot complete the cycle and car will be in contact with the track at point y if the centripetal acceleration is greater than g so this is the key concept now we need to prove this one by calculations so let's try to understand first of all conservation of energy speed of the car at this point is given that is equal to 3.8 meters per second and the speed at point x is also equal to 3.8 meters per second because horizontal track has no friction and there are no resistive forces so simply we can use conservation of energy we can say kinetic energy at point x will be converted into kinetic energy at point y plus gpe at point y gpe at point y so kinetic energy at point x we can say this is one half mv x square plus one half mv y square plus mgh mgh and the height in this case is equal to diameter of this circle so height we can say is 0.62 we can also cancel mass so simply we can cancel mass here so we can write on this is one half vx is given that is 3.8 square and here we have one half v y square plus g we have to use 9.81 and the height is 0.62 meters because this is 0.62 centimeters so if you convert into meters you need to divide by 100 from here we can find out value of vy and value of vy from here will be equal to 1.5 meters per second so this is the speed of the car at point y now we need to calculate value of acceleration at point y so we can say acceleration at point y means the value of centripetal acceleration this will be equal to v square speed of the car at y divided by radius of the circle speed of the car we have found that is equal to 1.5 square divided by radius of the circle this is half of diameter if we solve this one over the final answer is 7.3 meters per second per second as ac in this case is less than g so car will fall down car will not be able to complete this cycle so car will fall down that's all what we need to write down for this question and this question has three marks the first mark you will get if you have written this conservation of energy this is conservation of mechanical energy there is no energy loss means energy is not converted into other forms of energy so mechanical energy is conserved in this case there is no friction there are no resistive forces you will get one mark and the second mark you will get if you have calculated centripetal acceleration so the second mark is also c mark then the last mark you will get if you have written this one in this case car will fall down so this question has three marks very nice question you need to be very clear about this one for part d we need to suggest with a reason but without calculation whether our conclusion in c would be different for a car of mass 460 grams moving with the same initial speed so first thing we need to understand what is the effect of same initial speed with the speed at point five we have already discussed that one half m v x square this is equal to one half m v y square plus m g h in this case mass we can cancel so it does not depend on mass if v x is the same it means v y stays the same so simply we can say in this case as v x is the same means the initial speed is the same so v y is also same if v y is same then the centripetal acceleration at point y will also stay same because ac is equal to v y square over r if v y is the same it means centripetal acceleration will stay same so again we will get same value of centripetal acceleration as we got before so 
so in part c we have seen centripetal acceleration is lower than g so car will again fall down because centripetal acceleration is not depending on mass we can simply say centripetal acceleration is independent of mass so it will not make any difference now let me show you how you can write down your answer so simply you can say acceleration is independent of mass so this is our explanation it makes no difference and this is our conclusion if you write on this much you will get one more